Finally, to complete the drafting process, we need to adjust the armhole and through the front and back sloper. To finish up our drafting process, we need to adjust the front armhole by reducing it. To start, measure the length of the front and back armhole. What happens to the front armhole is dependent on the measurement of the back armhole. Take the measurement of the back armhole and subtract a half an inch dart. The dart was subtracted to get the true, the true length of the back armhole. I took the back armhole measurement and got 9 inches and subtracted the half an inch dart and got 8.5 inches. Take the front armhole measurement. I took my front armhole measurement and got 11.5 inches. Remember the front armhole measurement is dependent upon the back armhole measurement. To adjust or reduce the front armhole, draw a fold line from the bust point to the armhole curve. Then starting at the point where the fold line intersects the armhole curve, measure the difference between the front and back armhole along the armhole curve and mark. On my sloper it's 3 inches. Starting at the bottom of the armhole, measure down 2 inches along the side seam, then draw a slash line from the bust point to that point at the side seam. Then slash the line at the side seam up to the bust point but not beyond. And fold the armhole along the fold line at the armhole. The goal here is to create a side seam dart that will simultaneously reduce the front armhole to about eight and a half inches to eight inches, which is one, which is half inch less than the back armhole. In a fitted garment, the front armhole should measure half an inch less than the back armhole. I folded my armhole about 1 inch in, then placed the paper at the side seam that I would use to create the, si the side seam dart when I'm ready. Then I redrew my armhole with a curved ruler, then measured it to see if it measures between 8 to 8 and a half inches. Remember the front armhole can measure no more than 8 and a half inches like the back armhole or half an inch less which, which will be 8 inches. I repeated the process of folding my armhole, redrawing it, and measuring it to make sure it measures no more than 8 to 8 and a half inches. I still didn't get my desired goal, so I repeated the process again. Finally, after a few attempts, I got my desired goal. I redrew my armhole curve with my curved ruler, then me measured my armhole with my measuring tape. The front armhole measures about 8 and 1 8 inches, which is about half an inch less than the back armhole. So here I'm just drawing in my armhole with my curved ruler to create a well curved armhole. After I was done with adjusting the front armhole, I joined the side seam and folded the side seam dart to make sure that the side seam line is straight.
I trimmed off the excess paper at the side seam dart to give the slooper a more neater look. After folding my dart, I redrew my side seam line with a straight ruler. Sometimes after creating a dart anywhere on a sloper, the line on that area may not align properly. Though mine was not that noticeable, but in some cases they are very noticeable. With the side seam dart completed, I check for the shoulder seam length and the side seam length to make sure that they are equal. I had to check the shoulder length on the front and back sloper to make sure they're equal. I also checked to make sure there's a smooth transition between the armhole and the neck curve and I made necessary correction where needed. So there's a smooth curve transition between the slopers at the neckline when placed side by side so I didn't bother to do any correction. Next, I moved on to the armhole to check for a smooth curve transition and you could see that the curve at the armhole is not as smooth. So I went in with my curve ruler to smoothen out the armhole at the edge of the shoulder around the shoulder area and I created, I tried to create a smooth curve and then I went in with my straight ruler to draw in the, sh the shoulder length properly to give it a smooth curve transition. I also made sure there's a smooth curve transition at the bottom of the armhole. So again, I went in with my curved ruler to try and create a smooth curve transition. The purpose of a smooth curve transition that I'm always looking for between the armhole, the neckline, and the bottom of the armhole is because that when you're sewing, you want to create a smooth curve when the garments are sewn together. To draw my dart peak, while the side seam dart is still folded, I added a half an inch seam allowance to the side, then used my tracing wheel to trace along the side seam line, not the seam allowance line. It would create a dotted impression and I used my ruler to draw in the impression to create my dart peak. Once that is done, I'm going to add a half an inch seam allowance all around my front and back sloper. Next, I added half an inch allowance on my center back and center front sloper. After adding the half an inch seam allowance, I went ahead and cut out my front and back sloper. To finish up, I did another check to make sure that the length of the shoulder is equal and to make sure there's a smooth transition at the armhole and at the neckline and also at the bottom of the armhole. Okay everyone, we've come to the end of this video tutorial. This video tutorial is the final part to draft on the basic bodies. And as always, if I have made draft on the basic bodies a little bit easier to understand and helped further your fashion designing experience, please give this video a thumbs up.